Hey guys, this is Pi with SRLounge.com, and today we have invited Jeremy Cowart, in case you don't know, to be our May interview of the month. Now, for those of you that don't know, Jeremy is an incredible photographer. Uh, Jeremy, you focus more on like environmental portraits. You do a lot of celebrity work, musicians, mm -hmm. everything mm -hmm. like that, right? Yep, exactly. Now, we've been following Jeremy for quite a while, and actually, this whole interview and this meetup was actually something that we've been planning for like a couple mm -hmm. months. Yeah. This man's incredibly busy. <laughs> But uh, so, so tell us, you're actually here in Orange County for another mm -hmm. reason too. You're doing a conference, or what are you doing today? Yeah, I'm uh, speaking at the Catalyst Conference. It's a leadership conference for you know everything from technology to faith to uh, the arts and music, and it's kind of just a fun, very cool conference. And I'm speaking. I'm creating an art video over the course of three days. I'm doing a few photo shoots, and I'm promoting a, a book that I'm working on. So. That's really cool. So yeah. is it, wait, so the next three days you're going to be speaking every day or is it just kind of? No, today is a speaking day, but then all three days I'll be drawing and creating my art video and then I'll be going back and forth between the booth and then I'll be doing a few photo shoots. So it'll Very be crazy. Cool. Yeah. That's really cool. Now, I'm assuming that most of you guys probably, if you guys have been into photography, you've probably seen Jeremy's work. I mean, we have just, I noticed that you do a lot of different things and most of the time you're photographing, like you said, you're doing environmental portraits where you're shooting celebrities or musicians kind of mm -hmm. in their environments that they would typically be in. Mm -hmm. um, and it's amazing work. I mean, we all know that's amazing work, but I kind of want to know where did you start? Like, where did you, when did you jump into photography? Were you always a photographer or did you do something else before? Yeah, I, uh, I originally in high school, college, wanted to be a painter. Mm -hmm. uh, fine art was my love. And then uh, my, I think my parents were afraid that I wouldn't make a living, so they're like, have you heard of this thing called graphic design? So they, uh, they, they told me about graphic design, so I went to college and studied that, and that's where I first learned Photoshop. And so then I did graphic design for five or six years and then switched into web design during that time. So I learned mm -hmm. all the you know, web stuff, and I, I was doing HTML code and all that good stuff, CSS. And, uh, <laughs> And then, you know, 2001, or no, 2003, I got my first camera, and by 2005, I decided that's all I want to do. I'm going to shoot full-time. So 2005 was my first year as a photographer. Wow. And what were you shooting on back then when you first started? Like, when you first would say your professional career started, what were you? It was, uh, well, I shot for a very brief amount of time on medium format. Mm -hmm. uh, I had an old Bronica, and then I switched. My first digital camera was a... Uh, Canon G1, like the three megapixel yeah. point and shoot. Yeah. And then shortly after that, I upgraded to the very first, I think it was the Mark 1, Canon Mark 1, I forget what the, but it was like eight megapixels, you know, their first digital SLR. Yeah. Was my first like main camera. So that's pretty awesome. And, and how did you feel like you, I mean, this is a very tough industry to break into with mm -hmm. music and celebrities and portraits and, and that kind of stuff. What was your kind of steps to get into it? Well, I'm from Nashville, which is Music City, and so literally all of my friends were, were musicians and writers, and so we would hang out, and I would design their albums, and then I would shoot their albums, and then they would get signed to labels, and they would kind of drag me along with them, and then the art directors would start using me for their projects, and, um, and so it's a very natural, organic, there was, no, there was never any effort made, which in hindsight I realized ha is how is very rare. Mm -hmm. But at the time it was a very organic, you know, natural thing. Like I'd hang out with my friend and I would design his record and then yeah. I'd shoot his record and then it moved into the record labels and then um, and then shortly thereafter I, I beat uh, this lady in, in Hollywood submitted her photographers for a job and I got the job. So the label called her and said, This guy Jeremy got the job, you should check out his work and so uh, then I signed a deal with her shortly after. Um, uh, her name is Karen Weiss, by the way, and uh -huh. so we're still working together. And uh, and so she really helped me get into the, the Hollywood world in terms of TV companies and all that. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah. that's that's an amazing start. And it's crazy that it, it kind of, because most people would think that when you are starting out, it's very deliberate. Like you, when you're starting, mm -hmm. you're, it's like you're just focused on getting certain kind of clients. It's, it's interesting to hear that it was really more of an organic kind of experience mm -hmm. for you, where it's just, these are my friends and mm -hmm. this is what I'm going to do and get mm -hmm. into it. All right, so what I find really interesting is that you mentioned that your background is actually in graphic design because mm -hmm. it's it's very, very visible that you know what you're doing in your post-production. Your post-production mm -hmm. is incredible and uh, and your production skills, especially like when you do like very artistic things. Like I remember you did uh, those self-portraits where you basically took different basically images and composite them all in mm -hmm. one shot. 
And that's that's what you're gonna do at the conference too, right? You're gonna yeah. do one of those. Mm-hmm. Exactly. So, uh, how do you find that that background has kind of helped you in photography? Uh, it's a combination of things. I mean, with graphic design, you study composition and color and lines and all that stuff. But then, in graphic design, you also really, really have to know and learn Photoshop. And so I feel like I've just had years and years of, of being, being forced to really know Photoshop well. And so, you know, when I get into that program, it, it just feels so natural. It feels like my yeah. hands, you know, whereas a lot of other programs, I feel like a complete dork. I don't know anything <laughs> about them, but Photoshop is definitely my comfort zone. And so being able to paint and play and composite and add layers and go crazy is just a blast. In fact, I was thinking about it this morning, how excited I am this week to do this video because I haven't done one in a while and it I feel like a kindergartner I mean it's like yeah. literally jumping into a box of crowns and just <laughs> going crazy you know it's a blast so are you still doing all of your own production then for your own work or are you like do you ever hire post production uh, do you ever hire like uh, retouchers or anything like that or yeah what? no I certainly hire uh, there's a two or three retouchers that I will bounce between when I'm really busy I mean it depends on the type of retouching like skin work I don't like doing mainly because it takes so long and I don't yeah. have that kind of time and it's very tedious and painfully <laughs> tedious and so I usually outsource that but when it comes to anything that involves like the vibe or the tones or the mm. overall look I prefer to kind of control that myself. And I remember sure. last time you said that you in addition to using Photoshop you primarily edited with Capture One. Do you still mm-hmm. use Capture One now? Or? Yeah for raw processing I use Capture One. Pro. Okay mm-hmm. and have you tried like Lightroom and you tried Aperture and the other things or yeah, no, I, I love Lightroom too. Um, in fact, there's this new company called a Visual Supply Company, uh-huh. and they make film presets. Um, and usually, the word "preset" or "action" makes me throw up in my mouth a little <laughs> bit. <laughs> but uh, but they make these film presets, and I'm not plugging that because they've asked me to, or whatever. But I gen- genuinely love these presets, and yeah. so they're only available for Lightroom and Aperture. And so it's forced me to start using oh, Lightroom gotcha. again yeah. because I like the presets presets so much that I go into Lightroom to use yeah. those now. And um, do you, do you feel like there's a big difference between like Capture One versus Lightroom or? Yeah, there is a big difference. I mean, Capture One, I still think, has a big a big advantage in terms of the final tones. Like, mm. when I edit my images in there, they, there's something about the tonal quality that I just can't get with Lightroom. But then Lightroom is so much more user-friendly. The interface is way easier to use. Capture One has this uh, feature where it shuts down about every 10 minutes. And so you're, <laughs> That's a great feature. Yeah, it's I remember really, that feature, actually. I've been <laughs> yeah. playing with it one yeah. <laughs> So you have to get used to its bugs and its downfalls. and so. But I have gotten used to it, so I'm just used to rebooting the program every... You, you know. just time it to like auto-restart in 11 minutes. <laughs> right, so. <laughs> exactly. So it's got its bugs, and Lightroom is definitely the program I still encourage new people to yeah. use for raw processing. Um, but Capture One... I deal with all the crap to, to get those tones that it produces. So Yeah. Well, we had a chance to play with, uh, and I asked because we actually know all this stuff, by the way, guys, because well, we've been following Jeremy for a while, and we also have his uh, Life Finder DVD. We got that DVD when you first released mm-hmm. it, and uh, it was actually a really great DVD, and one of my favorite parts on there was actually your interview with Zach Arias, mm, yeah. and uh, that was really cool. It was really enlightening, but on that DVD, you kind of go into workflow stuff and, mm-hmm. and how you process and everything like that. So. That's how we're not we're not stalkers. We don't like we. <laughs> right. I, I sometimes park at Jeremy's house and just watch <laughs> through the window. I guess, but yeah, I've seen you out there a few times. It's a little yeah. weird. It's like once a week, dude. You gotta, <laughs> you gotta let it go. Yeah, get over it. <laughs> so uh, so we got a phase one loan to us, and we actually uh, played with it for a week, and we've been playing with Capture One, mm-hmm. and uh, and I do kind of notice that color representation is a little bit different. Mm-hmm. It's a little bit more. Uh, I, I guess it's easier to get a more accurate kind of color representation and the tonal quality is just a little bit different than Lightroom mm-hmm. but dude that 10 minute shut off feature <laughs> <laughs> right we all deal with that yeah definitely so, uh, well that's really cool so from a from a shooting perspective oh and by the way do you have uh, you're still selling Life Finder right mm-hmm. which yeah. is a great DVD guys we've we've reviewed it we've checked it out it's an awesome DVD for you guys to check out are you working on any other DVDs or projects or what else is going on right now a lot, um, a lot. Yeah, I'm I'm working on a book right now. Uh, not a teaching book at all. It's actually mm-hmm. a book called What's Your Mark, and it'll be a a book featuring 16 to 20 um, portraits and interviews of uh, people making a mark on the world. And it's kind of a challenge to the rest of us to to say what's your mark and what are what are you gonna do with your life. And mm-hmm. so it's a kind of bigger look at at life. Um, 
then this morning actually I announced my Life Finder tour, so that's something that I'll oh, that I'll cool. be doing through the month of May. I'm going yeah. all over the country to uh, to talk, and and I'll be doing that in between more conferences in May that I'll be speaking at. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's my phone ringing. So, I'm gonna, <laughs> so somebody good. forgot to turn off the ringer. This Welcome is to a natural interview, guys. Welcome to a forgetful <laughs> photographer. Um, We're not even going to edit this out. We're just going to leave it. Yeah, just leave it in there. <laughs> So yeah, I'm doing I'm doing the tour uh, over the course of May. I'm also working on an iPhone app that I'm really excited about that we'll talk about a little bit. Yeah, um, tell me about this tour. What are you going to be doing when you go around the different? Are you going around the country or around mm-hmm. the country? We're doing a uh, Denver, Denver, Orlando, New York City, Orange County, um, Minneapolis, and a few other a few other places. But basically, it's a full day of, of I mean, honestly, just me kind of talking shop. Uh, yeah, it's it's a type of thing where. If you and I were to sit down and just start talking shop about everything, lighting, color, composition, originality, vision, um, uh, ideas, humanitarian projects, all that stuff, it's it's like a day of just being real honest about everything. Yeah. You know, it's not like, a, here's how you use your camera, here's how you use your lights. Like that <laughs> stuff puts me to sleep, you know. Well, and it's all over too. Like, I mean, you can find so many books and so many things online, mm-hmm. resources on just... Yeah how to use your camera. I think we need more these days. We need more of like, and that's kind of what I liked about the, uh, you know, on the Life Finder DVD, I found you talking through the processes of each of these shoots and through the creative flow. Mm -hmm. And that's what was the most helpful because it's, I guess when you get more and more into photography, you can look at shots and you can say, okay, I I roughly know exactly Mm -hmm. how this was lit, but you wouldn't necessarily know the creative process behind how you got there. Mm -hmm. Um, So you know technically how it was done, but not how to get there and that's yeah. what I kind of like about these kind of tours and, and what you're doing with Life Finder and everything like that yeah I just I just feel like like you said there's so many people teaching the nuts and bolts and the nuts and bolts just get boring after a while <laughs> I mean my friend Zach Arias teaches and he's the best I mean mm-hmm. he's the type of guy that I do encourage okay if you want to know the technicalities of lighting and your camera and f-stops and shutter speeds go watch Zach yeah, um, Zach's incredible. Yeah, and he did that one. What is it? The one, the light? one light. Yeah, mm-hmm. the one light tour, or which is a, which is a really great idea because it is amazing what you can do with one light. Yeah, I was a little jealous. Like, dang it, he stole that. No, he didn't <laughs> steal it. I was like, I wish I had thought of that. Um, and so, yeah, in fact, I think Zach and I would have a fun time teaching together because I'm more about the vision and the the, the bigger picture, and he's about mm-hmm. about the nuts and bolts. So, anyway, yeah. What other stuff are you working on? Is there? I mean. You got so many things going on, and you still do help portrait, right? That's your mm-hmm. your kind of nonprofit nonprofit yeah. that you're doing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we uh, it's a once a year event where photographers worldwide give portraits to people in need, and yeah, it's amazing. I mean, we, we do do some events around the year, but the main focus is the one day bringing the worldwide photography community together. It's just insane. I mean, people. We have we don't have many haters, but the people that do hate say, "Why would you give a homeless person a portrait? Why would you give people a picture? They need food and shelter yeah. and clothing." And people have no idea. I mean, it's insane what a simple portrait and a simple time spent with somebody can do to literally change their lives. I mean, yeah. I, I have seen people their whole lives uprooted and changed, new career, new everything because of a simple headshot, just doing their makeup, showing them how beautiful they are. And it gets in their head and changes their whole self attitude, you know. Well, and when when I saw the video behind it, I realized that because uh, when I first heard about it, I thought I, I kind of thought the same thing, like, oh, why would you take pictures of someone that's homeless? They mm-hmm. they do need things that are more practical than that. Mm-hmm. When I saw the video, I realized that it's not even about the photo; it's about the care and the time spent mm-hmm. in building someone's right. confidence. Yeah, totally. It's not like it's not like they see a photo and they go, oh, this is amazing. This has changed my life. It's showing people that mm-hmm. there are people that care. Showing them that they can, you know, they are beautiful people, that they mm-hmm. have confidence in themselves, and that's what it kind of turns around their lives, right? right? So it's it, it's an amazing concept, and, mm-hmm. and you're a genius for thinking of that. And yeah, we did we did an event a couple weeks ago, actually, in San Francisco with prostitutes and sex industry workers, and uh, the the biggest thing they said the day after and the week following was, "Why weren't y'all judging us? Like, why yeah. weren't y'all?" you know, staring at our bodies and, and we're not used to that. We, mm-hmm. And so just the day of, forget photography, like you said, it was just about us being with them and asking them and treating them like normal people that rocked their world. So, yeah. so yeah, it's certainly more about just photography. Well, and if you think about the concept, you're essentially saying, 
uh, it's it's allowing someone else to find the beauty in you, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, you're you're basically saying like, and for these people that maybe they haven't taken a good look at themselves, they don't feel confident about themselves, mm-hmm. they don't feel like they have anything to offer, and some stranger comes along and just finds kind of that inner beauty and captures it for them. Mm-hmm. That's a really powerful thing, and that's yeah. what you know. So whenever you have events, let us know. We'll make sure we kind cool. of blast the community and everything. Yeah. Like that. I'm I'm scared to ask. What else are you working on, dude? I don't. You're a family guy too, right? <laughs> you have a family. You yeah. have. How do you find time? To, I, I know I say I'm a workaholic, but dude, you got to be a crazy workaholic to. I guess get all I these am. Done. Yeah, I mean, I tend to downplay it, but when you do put all the projects on paper, it's definitely insane. I mean, my business manager begs me slowly, <laughs> uh, daily, to slow down because, uh, and it's not like I'm trying to be this guy with all these things. It's just the way my mind works. I mean, yeah. literally every day. I have new ideas, and it feels like those new ideas are the new shiny thing that I have to pursue. Yeah. And it's not like, a, oh, I need to, it's not like I have goals or a business plan. I mean, I really don't. I literally fly by the seat of my pants, and, and I just, I'm a, I'm a creative person, so when I have ideas, I just try to make them go. Yeah. And and then I turn around, I look behind me, and I've got, I'm dragging 20 ideas along, and I'm like, <laughs> oh, crap, I don't think I can do all of this. Um, and so it can be a problem. You know, it can get overwhelming, but it's also a lot of fun. I'd still rather do this than anything else. Yeah. And well, so. and you're still shooting a lot too. Like you said, mm-hmm. you had four shoots this week that are your. Well, yeah, they're for this book project. So, but yeah, I'm certainly juggling photo shoot photo shoots in yeah. between. So that's pretty incredible, dude. So, is there anything else on the horizon that you're working on that you can <laughs> mention, or uh, we we got it covered? <laughs> yeah, for the most part, we got it covered. There's definitely a lot of fine art stuff that it's some goals of the fine art stuff I'm doing. Cool. Well, we'll yeah. we'll keep you guys posted whenever Jamie does new things. And uh, so, from a photography standpoint, I mean that's what we are at SR Lounge. Talk to us a little about your your photography and uh, and I kind of want to know what is your creative process when you approach a new shoot. Like when you go into a shoot, I, I don't know that you did like um, you did Tim Tim Tebow right mm-hmm. when you did that shoot. Uh, are these <laughs> Are these guys that are they coming to you with concepts and ideas? Are they relying on you? Like, are the advertisers just relying on you for that? Or are mm-hmm. they kind of saying it? What What happens in this kind of process? I feel like most of the time people are relying on me to, I mean, given the nature of most of the portraits I take, a lot of it is an environmental portrait. I don't shoot a lot of advertising, like big yeah. ad campaigns, because usually those are very specific. Here's the concept. Here's the one shot we need that's going to be in all the magazines. You're just I don't executing. do a lot of that. Yeah. I, I do more of the... You know, whether it's a band or celebrity, it's more, the process is usually more find an amazing location um, and I show up and I do my thing. Yeah. And, you know, so my thing is very intuitive. It's very looking around even a room like this, uh, which is just a pretty simple room with mm-hmm. great walls. And it's yeah. how do I make this room amazing? I mean, when people see my site, they say, how do you find all these amazing locations? I'm like, well, it's not, it's not amazing locations. It's yeah. making a, a mundane location amazing with lighting and composition and color and all that stuff. So, um, see, so yeah, I'm a very, I actually hate pre-production and I hate planning and I yeah. hate thinking, I'm not, I'm jealous of the photographers who are like, okay, I have this concept and here's all the things I'm gonna do to execute it, here's all the props I'm gonna buy. I'm more like, let me show up with my lights and <laughs> be forced to create some Figure magic. Out something. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Well, I love the, uh, on the Life Finder DVD, you kind of go in these locations, and they, they're cool locations, but dude, you make them look completely different from what they are, and uh, with your lighting and with everything that you're mm-hmm. doing, and they look amazing afterwards, whereas I could see a lot of people just going into it and just t- kind of taking like typical portraits and stuff like that. So do you still have your, I know you had that in the video, in the DVD, you had that lighting van, like your entire gear van. Basically. Yeah. You still have that, right? Mm-hmm. Well, back in Nashville, I don't have it here in LA, but yeah. Okay, so... What I mean, what would you say your go-to tools are for a shoot? Like, if you had just, if you had a body, a lens, and two lights, I mean, mm-hmm. what would you be taking into these shoots? Um, well, I have it all in my camera bag. Actually, there's one little <laughs> kit I take. It's a 600 watt Pro Photo, you know, battery pack is like this big. Uh-huh. The light fits in there with my lenses, which is usually my 24 to 70 uh, 28, which is so beat up it's not even working right now. Um, <laughs> 7200, 16 to 35, 85 millimeter 1.2, 50 millimeter 1.2, and a light and card, pocket wizard, and Do you have a laptop. favorite lens? Like if there's one lens that you just had to have? Well, I don't own the lens, and I don't know why, because I, I keep meaning to buy it, but the 85 1.2 is definitely an amazing portrait yeah. lens. Um, the 24 to 70, I just love, because 
allows you to be more lazy with the Zoom. You know, <laughs> some people say, oh, don't use Zoom lenses, but the majority of my work that's on my website is all Zoom lenses, and it's been just fine. Yeah, you know? that's what's funny is that I feel like with my 2470, when I go out and shoot with that thing, I don't get good stuff, and then I go watch your DVD, and I'm like, dude, he's getting this kind of stuff out of the 2470. I'm like, there's a little bit of a discrepancy here of what I'm getting, and so it's amazing what you can do with that lens, and, and you kind of... I feel like watching those videos mm. kind of turned me on to the 2470 because mm. I was leaving in my bag for the most part when I go into a shoot because I felt like what I was getting was so standard out of it. Like it was mm. so like, it, it kind of reminded me of like that point and shoot quality. But then mm. I see your stuff and it's like, dude, he's pulling off awesome wides. You're getting like great bokeh in the backgrounds mm. or bokeh, however you guys want to say it. Yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> so uh, it, it's amazing like, it's really more of what you're comfortable with as far as the tools that you use, mm -hmm. not really the equipment itself. What what body are you shooting on right now? Uh, the 5D Mark II. I haven't Mark upgraded II. to the Mark III quite yet, and I think I'm still waiting for a bigger files because you know they didn't really upgrade the file size, and that is a need for me to have larger more megapixels. Yeah. So most people don't care, but for me, a lot of clients want the bigger files. So it makes a lot uh, of sense actually for editorial mm -hmm. and advertising right. and stuff like that. I, uh, speaking of which, I dumped my 5D Mark III yesterday <laughs> Did you? at the beach. That was a, it was a fabulous day yesterday, going great, portrait session, good mm -hmm. early day. Seven o'clock, wave comes, bad wave. Wow. And it just, uh, I had my 7200 on it, and oh, it was, it was bad news. Is it okay? I don't know. It's actually in the Canon shop as we speak right now, so wow. they're trying to see if they can That's resurrect painful. the thing. But. I, left, I once left my 5D, no, 1D Mark III on a cab in Hong Kong. With a rented on a cabin on, <laughs> on a oh, yeah like, on, like on inside no inside the cab oh. with a rented lens on it oh, never no. to be found again. Oh, uh, dude, yeah, places exactly. like that, I no, feel like no I, good. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> no bueno. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So okay, so from a creative standpoint, I mean, when you go into these shoots, the locations that you're finding, do you have someone that actually like a location scout that helps you find these locations? And sometimes, I mean, the budget seemed to be uh, shrinking more and more lately. Um, so when we can, we hire a location scout sometimes we just pick a spot but a, a lot of times it'll it'll hurt you if you don't at least go look at your location like last yeah. week i did a shoot in nashville and they were like here's the type of place we're shooting at here's the vibe i'm like oh we'll be fine mm -hmm. and i regretted that i should have gone and looked at it because it just didn't i mean i still got the job done we still got some shots that we liked but if i had gone and looked at it i would have chosen something else you know yeah so it's definitely worth it to to pre-scout your locations for oh, sure. Oh, for sure, for yeah. planning out and everything. And mm -hmm. are you finding that for most of these locations you're actually needing to permit? Like, are you actually permitting the locations? Yeah, there's or? a lot of that. <laughs> it's, there's so much red tape, and I don't know if it's just, I, I assume like when you were shooting in Tennessee, there probably wasn't as much of this, right? Like Not as much, tape. there's still some, but yeah. yeah, in LA it's ridiculous. In LA it's crazy, you can't mm -hmm. shoot anywhere without a permit, or either that or you just take your camera body only. Well, the permit's know? usually not the big deal, it's the place that say, yeah, you can shoot here, it's just $3,000 a day. Yeah. You're like, really? Yeah, getting the permits is not the hard part. It's just the uh, price. And it's like, yeah. dude, like I, I remember we wanted to permit Huntington Library. And they were like, uh, it's $750 for uh, two hours. And, and mm -hmm. we're like, dude, like the client's paying $750 for the entire portrait session. Right. How are they going to like just pay that for a, a location yeah. fee? So there's kind of like a, this discrepancy between, I think here uh, out here in LA, it feels like everybody thinks that any shoot that goes on is a big production shoot. Mm -hmm. And that everybody wants their piece of the pie. Mm -hmm. When in reality, most shoots that happen are very small budget shoots. Yeah, that's a good point. And especially these days, I mean, even the big, big TV stuff that I do, all those shoots are just getting smaller and smaller and smaller. Yeah. So, for sure. Well, so for someone that's kind of starting out and they want to go this route of shooting, uh, you know, celebrity musicians, advertising, you know, whatever it is, this editorial mm -hmm. style that you've developed, what would you recommend? H how do they start? I mean, let's say that. They're basically just, they're on their rebel, they're considering, I want to get more into photography. Where do they go? Um, well, the biggest secret to getting into that world, really the biggest secret to becoming successful at all, is, is finding your, your unique visual style. I mean, all the people that I see succeeding um, in that genre, or like I said, really any genre, is the people who have found something unique that everybody else wants. Cause mm -hmm. The, the sad fact is that literally anybody can now take a good picture. Yeah. I mean, it's just crazy. I see people on Instagram with their phones accidentally <laughs> taking amazing pictures, you yeah. know. And so, you know, somebody emailed me yesterday, how do I get an agent? And his work was 
good, but there was nothing unique about it. I was mm-hmm. like, you'll never, you'll never find an agent because agents are like a, a box of chocolates. Each each person in their box needs to have a unique flavor, unique yeah. style. And that so, makes sense. you know, when you look at a uh, Jill Greenberg or Frank Ockenfels, there's all these people in the celebrity world. You know, if you do a Google image search of their work and you see all those thumbnails, there's a very distinct thing mm-hmm. that they do. Um, so it's defining that style. It's, that defi- it's yeah, it's defining that style, that vision, because uh, people think if they lit something perfectly and if they retouched it perfectly and if the composition is perfect, it doesn't matter. That's irrelevant mm-hmm. these days um, because anybody can figure those things out. But um, the the unique style is a is a needle in a haystack. You know, people. That's what everybody's looking for. Yeah, and you know, one of the things that we see a lot too is that. Uh, and, and I always try and whenever we do, uh, you know, lectures and stuff like that, I always try and tell people like, find your, find your focus. Like, mm-hmm. because you see all these photographers that they, they put up on their websites that I do weddings, <laughs> portraits, uh, mm-hmm. uh, travel, commercial, I do uh, food, I do everything. Mm-hmm. And when I sit there and think from a client's perspective, if I'm hiring somebody, I want to hire a specialist, right? right. I mean, you don't want to yeah. hire the jack of all trades kind of person. Mm-hmm. Uh, you want to hire the specialist. And so that not only having a focus as far as style, but like as far as what type of photography do you do? Right. If you just, if you only do food photography, I mean, it's it's much easier to be an incredible yeah. food photographer yeah. than to be great at everything. Well, and if you do, if you are going to do separate things, have an, an entirely unique and different website for branding things. Branding for it, yeah, you know, branding it, sip up. Like if you're shooting up. weddings and bands, your brides will be impressed that you shoot bands, mm-hmm. but if your bands see that you're shooting weddings, they're going to be like, no, 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 no. <laughs> We're, we're out, we're yeah. out, we're bailing. Yeah, I tell people, I, I've been to Africa a lot, and I, I love going to Africa because you see these little shops that will say funeral parlor service, or and also, we also sell hot dogs, and we, <laughs> we, we're we also a taxi cab service. And, and you look at all those things together, and you're like, ooh, I would never do, I would yeah. never go to that place for any of those things, you know, yeah. just through my cap. And so, you know, you have to think, it's the same thing in photography. It's like if you're shooting babies, mm-hmm. And bands and weddings and architecture, you're gonna suck at all of them. You know, yeah. there's no, there's no way you can juggle all those things and be good at them. Um, but people think because they can, you know, that they should. And it's mm-hmm. an easy trap to fall into. I've done it before. I've certainly had those days where I see this amazing lifestyle image and I think, oh, I can shoot that. I can do that. So yeah. I'm gonna put that stuff on my website, and then I end up confusing my clients. So. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's definitely a good thing to, to zoom in and, and focus on. And and that's exactly what I say too. If you do do that focus, like if you do want to spread out your, your focus a little broader, mm-hmm. brand it separate, brand it on a different website, different mm-hmm. company, different everything, yeah. and keep them separate. So Yeah, so uh, I recently, even in the last couple of months, had a very um, huge revelation in terms of all the portfolio stuff, you know, because my, my website is relaunching in May. That's another thing I should have told you oh, about nice. a little while ago. Another <laughs> huge project is... Kind of rebranding everything I'm doing, um, but I had a meeting um, that changed my career. One meeting changed my whole perspective on my my career as a photographer. Mm-hmm. Walked into this big ad agency and met with this creative director, who's the creative director of Gatorade, Nike. I mean, the biggest at the biggest level you can imagine. And walk in, I show him my portfolio, and uh, you could tell it was I was just another portfolio coming through. Yeah, just nothing. They see it know. so much. It's like he he sees work far more amazing than mine all day long. You That's know? crazy that you'd say that actually. Because <laughs> it's um, so good. Your work is pretty amazing. No, you, you really, at that level, I mean, that, like I said, that's the best in the world. Yeah. And so I could just tell, you know, there was there was not a lot of interest. It was mm-hmm. just kind of like, okay, thanks for coming in. See you later. Um, and so after the portfolio meeting, I said, can I, can I keep you a little bit longer? And I showed him um, all my Haiti work, my Africa mm-hmm. work. I showed him I told him about my iPhone app. I told him about the nonprofit Help Portrait. I showed him a few of my art videos. At the end of that second part of our meeting, he was so blown away and so moved that he had his entire staff come in to meet me. That's crazy. And he said, this is Jeremy Coward, and I want us to start working with him. Jeremy thinks like an art director. He's not just another guy who can take pretty pictures and good yeah. lighting. He's actually a, uh, an idea person, and that's the kind of people I want to be working with. Yeah. And so that meeting, now I'm trying to change my website to reflect that meeting. Because I think because anybody can take a good picture and learn Photoshop and learn lighting, that I'm now trying to get to a point where I'm showing, you know, like my new website will say photographer. Um, 
it won't be like the the different styles, but it will be. Here's my photography. Mm-hmm. Here's my fine art weird videos. Here's my humanitarian projects. Here's my iPhone app, and here's my speaking teaching stuff. And so it'll show. It'll definitely show me as more than just a photographer. You yeah. Because I think these days um, there is an element of you have to hustle. Because I, I do see um, things getting scary. If I'm being really honest, you know, things are getting scary in the photography world. So I'm looking beyond photography. But even in my meetings, I'm seeing that as being a plus where people are like, yeah. oh, you're not just a photographer. You kind of do all these other things. So it's been interesting. I mean, it's a lesson I'm learning as we speak. And so every, every meeting since then, I've been doing the same thing. Mm-hmm. Show my portfolio, then say, can I show you all the other stuff I do? And it's uh it's helping it's a good thing i can see that being really useful because i mean like you said in a world where pretty much anybody can take great photos Mm -hmm. it's it's becoming more about can you can you now come up with great ideas Mm -hmm. i mean if you can uh, if everybody can take a great photo but not everybody can come up with great concepts Mm -hmm. that's a big difference Mm -hmm. like being able to execute execute and that's really interesting what he said that you think more like an art director Mm -hmm. and that's I, i would think that that's the person that like you know if a company hires they say you know, this is kind of who we are. This is what we want to do. We need you to come in and kind of help figure out what that is. Mm-hmm. And so you're kind of playing the part of like the, you know, you're doing marketing, you're mm-hmm. doing everything, and then you're going all the way down and executing the actual photograph. Mm-hmm. But there's so much kind of value added service in that that differentiates what mm-hmm. you do. Yeah. Um, so that's that's a really great kind of new approach. It's, it's not, you know, we always say that if you want to be successful, you got to do things differently. Uh, if everybody around you is... A natural light photographer mm-hmm. and and they're having a hard time doing that then don't be a natural light photographer be something different mm-hmm. but when you get to this level it's like now you have to add another level when everybody can pretty much pull off anything at your mm-hmm. level it's more about okay now who can pull off our ideas who can create yeah well yeah amazing. yeah i mean it kind of makes sense in terms of any you look at any boss and any employees under that boss like that boss is going to want people who are self-motivated who can think beyond that assignment you yeah. know and so most photographers that do work for these big art directors they are you know as one of my friends says a monkey pushing buttons you know yeah. and so they realize okay so you've mastered photoshop so you've mastered lighting so you've mastered retouching but you're another you're another monkey because there's mm-hmm. thousands of yeah. us now and so i think i went from being that just another guy to being oh, okay you're self-motivated you're thinking beyond just the next perfect picture and mm-hmm. you're you're driven and you know I, if I were a boss I'd be looking for that same thing so I, I kind of feel like that's where the, the things are changing a little bit you yeah know, for, for me at least so well, I think it's a great bit of advice and uh, so I want to go a, a back for a second about equipment and uh, mm-hmm. are you still do you still shoot primarily strobes I know this is complete like one no, it's okay. change but totally cool. are you still strobing or do you find that you're doing hot lighting more or what are you as far as lighting goes what do you feel like you're relying I on? actually use uh, I take my shirt off and bounce the sun off my stomach so <laughs> it's a it's a new thing I kind of hold my camera here and just it's like a white bounce card <laughs> yeah it's a white bounce card so uh, y'all just think about that just process that for a little bit that's the last image you should have when you go to sleep tonight is yeah the muffin top especially kind of <laughs> helps round things out um, I actually did have an assistant once that uh, had a white <laughs> undershirt and I didn't have a bounce card, I didn't have anything, and we had just no ceilings or anything like that. I had him follow me, just right next to me, bouncing off him the entire time. Like, Are you serious? At a wedding. And That's it was, amazing. It was awesome. It was great lighting. So <laughs> That's awesome. I imagine Jeremy's stomach is even better. <laughs> <laughs> no, definitely not. It gets a little weird when girls try it, but, you know, it's all different. Uh, no, so, uh, yeah, I'm pretty much using strobes. Um, yeah, for the most, I sh- do shoot a lot of natural light, too. Um, yeah. Sometimes it's lasers and projectors, you know, it's whatever. There's some great concept shoots on that uh, on the DVD again. Oh, oh yeah. Once again, the DVD. I that was the two things I was like, oh, that's such a cool idea. The the projector shoot where you're mm. basically throwing the image over the subject. Yeah, and then photoshopping, you know, around her, and that was fun. Yeah, that was really cool. And then the laser pointers. And mm. I, have, I actually have to say, I bought like six laser pointers right mm. after watching the DVD, <laughs> and I got these things, and they all broke within like two uses. Oh wow! <laughs> I got yeah. them on Amazon, and they were like really cheap. So I was like, where do I, I need to ask Jeremy, where do I get good laser pointers that <laughs> right. like, won't break? Yeah, yeah. So. I wish I had some secrets. I think when I need them, I'll just go into Staples and buy. They're so expensive, too. They're like, they 20, like 20 bucks each, Yeah, dude. 20 bucks. It's insane. But I did do one where we gaff taped a whole, a whole like, probably 60 lasers, 
to, to C stands and point them all at the subjects, and then you get smoke involved, and yeah. cool things happen for sure. Yeah, I um, love your use of lighting is, is pretty incredible. So, I mean, for those of you guys that haven't seen Jeremy's work, I, I assume that if you've watched this to the very end of this, you probably already are a fan of Jeremy's work. So, if you haven't seen it, check out the, we'll have all the links below in the description in the article itself, and we'll have links to everything that you do. Your, your amazing inspiration to us all, and uh, thanks. we're grateful for you to come down. I won't take up too much of your time because I know you got to run to this conference Good. pretty soon. Yeah, so. I appreciate it. <laughs> yeah, dude. So we yeah. thank you for having you and uh, we'll see you next time you're down in the area. Sounds good. Thank you all for watching. All right, guys. We'll see you later. Okay.